Just like it is with DeepSeek, the U.S. spends billions chasing innovations that others achieve for pennies. This is the story of two young Kenyan who built a mind-controlled robotic arm from e-waste, defying every odd stacked against them. For non-Africans, I know for them it's hard trying to imagine a world where cutting-edge neurotechnology isn't forged in Silicon Valley labs, Europe, or Chinese mega factories, but in Africa. But here on the continent, Moses Kuna and David Gathu, the self-taught inventors are turning discarded electronics into a prosthetic arm that reads brain signals, bypassing flashy funding and corporate backing to rewrite the rules of innovation. And this is a biorobotic prosthesis bilateral structured machine unit that uses brain signals to operate. Initiated. Using discarded electronic waste, they've built a device that can interpret the electric currents generated by brain cells and convert them into movements. It uses this neural biopotential headset receiver from the neuron center, that is from a section known as the motor center. The prosthetic arm can perform tasks like grabbing objects, opening doors, turning lights on and off, and even picking up a drink, all controlled by the user's thoughts. Converts those brain signals, uh, uh, amplifies them, filters them, then converts them into electronic current. And this electronic current is further uh, pushed forward to the uh, circuit of the robot, meaning it can convert the user's thought into robotic arm movement. They have managed to achieve human-like dexterity with no billion-dollar budgets, no armies of engineers, just two minds hacking biology with e-waste proving that brilliance thrives where resources are scarce. Those people who, ha who have lost uh, the use of their limbs, the disabled people, our aim is to give them something that will help them or will, will aid them to go into their daily activities in order not to be a, a dependent pe a person, to move from a dependent person to an independent person. While giants pour fortunes into clunky remote-controlled robots, these innovators ask, why not let the mind itself be the remote? Police give way. Demonstrating the flow of the bio-robotic arm system under self-testing. Articulations levels. Protocol sequences activated. Shoulder levels X and Y axis. Sequential testing initiated. Check. Elbow level Y axis. Sequential testing. Check. Wrist level ulna at radius Y axis sequential testing. Rotate left. Check. Rotate right. Check. Initiating fingers test sequence protocols. Small finger. Ring finger. Check. Middle finger. Check. Thumb. Finger. Check. Index. Finger. Check. Test sequences. Protocol deactivated. Welcome. Gathu. K. Gathu. Ad. Kiuna. Afrogenesis. Bio. Robotic. Neuroprosthesis. Shoulder. Level X. For them, the journey to this invention wasn't easy. Working out of their grandmother's former granary, now converted into a makeshift workshop, the cousins spent countless hours tinkering with wires, circuits, and salvaged electronics. Nibawasha, CT Mach. I have turned the light on. They started by carving a wooden hand, complete with joints, and then meticulously arranged electronic components to create a functional circuit. After numerous trials and errors, they finally developed a prototype that could respond to brain signals. Then by bad luck, this prototype got rained on and they had to start afresh again. The device works by using a headset receiver to capture brain activity, which is then translated into specific movements of the prosthetic arm. And this is a biorobotic prosthesis bilateral structured machine unit that uses brain signals to operate. It uses this neural biopotential headset receiver that is from a section known as the motor center 
your decision of picking a cup or picking a bottle hii kitu inachukua that signals converts those brain signals uh, uh, amplifies them filters them then converts them into electronic current and this electronic current is further uh, pushed forward to the uh, circuit of the robot meaning it can convert user's thought into robotic arm movement the inventors acknowledge that their creation has its limitations the materials they used mostly scavenged from electronic waste restrict the arm's durability and flexibility but they remain optimistic with access to better materials and funding they believe they can refine the device making it more durable fashionable and capable of performing even more complex tasks oh what is this by using the available resources that you like the, like the thrown away can cans yogurt and coca-cola all those parts that have been used the bottles that is you find that uh, they can be useful in a way by recycling them and this can help a child to assemble to assemble and create a robot that will be able to make the child to understand the fundamentals of the how to make a robot by using the available resources wow. through cleaning the environment you can come up with something that is a bit useful yeah. uh, it can think on its own yeah it has ability to can see you it try, it will try to maneuver until it finds a way to escape For now they continue to perfect their invention driven by a vision of making advanced prosthetics accessible to those who need them most, particularly in underserved communities. What makes this story even more inspiring is the sheer determination of these young innovators. Without formal training or financial backing, they've managed to create something that rivals the efforts of well-funded research institutions like Tesla. Small finger, ring finger, check. Little finger, check. Thumb. Finger. Check. Index. Finger. Check. Test sequences. Protocol deactivated. Welcome. Yahoo. K. Their work challenges the notion that groundbreaking innovation is the exclusive domain of wealthy nations or corporations. Instead, it highlights the untapped potential of individuals who, despite limited resources, are capable of changing the world. Think about it. A prosthetic that costs pennies not thousands used to democratize mobility for amputees worldwide. Imagine farmers in rural Kenya, trauma survivors in war zones, kids born without limbs, accessing such tech at an affordable cost, and not the expensive ones made in the U.S. System initiated. Aim is to give them something that will help them or will, will aid them to go into their daily activities in order not to be a dependent pe uh, person to move from a dependent person to an independent person it, it uses this neural road by potential headset receiver signals kutoka kwa kichwa from the neuron center that is 